Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lifford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. You know, it seems like so many homeowners are looking for ways to expand their existing kitchen area. Well, this kitchen's a fairly good size, about 10 feet by 15 feet, but the homeowners wanted even a larger kitchen. We'll accomplish that by removing this wall and expanding the kitchen with all new cabinets all the way over to this wall, adding an additional 60 square feet. Also, they wanted a taller ceiling, so we'll raise this ceiling up to the 10 foot height. That'll make for an exceptionally large and very attractive kitchen. And you'll see it all in this week's show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. As I mentioned earlier, we're right at the start of a kitchen renovation where we'll be removing this wall and enlarging the kitchen all the way over to that wall. Also, we'll be raising the ceiling up to the 10 foot height to really create a nice large kitchen. And that has been a challenge in the design for our certified kitchen designer, Laura Lawrence. Everybody loves the big, large kitchens, but a little more of a challenge for you to work everything out. It really is. You've got to be careful of getting your work triangle too big. Your distance between your cooktop, your sink, and your refrigerator is critical. You don't want it too large or too small. And that's when working with a large kitchen space, that's the biggest challenge at the point. Okay, now what about that first meeting when you go out and talk with homeowners to try to get that information out of them in terms of how they use the kitchen and whether they're the gourmet cook or the occasional cook, how do you get that information out of them? I have a kitchen design survey that I use to find out what a client's storage needs are, what their entertaining style is, what their cooking habits are, how their family tends to interact. That tries to take into account most of their needs and I use this as my major guideline when I'm creating the I design. See, I can see where that would be real helpful. Now I may mention we have the advantage in this kitchen not only to gain space by removing that wall, the homeowners are having an addition built on the front of this house that will enable us to remove this entire wall as well and large area on this side will be able to kind of go out into this area a little bit with the final design as well. Now, large space to work with, but it looks like you've utilized it very well. Take us through the plan. Uh, the sink is in pretty much the same location as it is now, but it's looking over a raised bar into the new addition. We have the cooktop on the island with the hood up above for the ventilation, and that looks out into the existing space. The refrigerator is on the end of the kitchen over here. Several reasons for that. One, the children can come and access their drinks and everything in the refrigerator without being in the main cooking workspace. And it completes our work triangle. You can see that it's very open in the middle. That allows two cooks to be in the kitchen at the same time without bumping into each other. Yeah, that makes sense. That really seems like that will work well. And also, I see the microwave is isolated back on this side of the kitchen and plenty of storage over there. For this particular family, this works because the children are the primary users of the microwave, again, out of the cooking area. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of storage. We've got a knee space for a communication area, the phone books, the telephone, everything that you need to let everybody know what's going on in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, the trash can and a tall pantry as well as some brooms and then lots of rollout shelves throughout the kitchen. This just helps bring all of those items that are in the back of the cabinet up to the front so you don't have to crawl in there to find out what oh, you've got. A lot, lot more convenient than just having the open cabinet space. Very much. Okay, now one of the things that um, this process with you working with homeowners that helped tremendously not only for the contractor but for the homeowner to get an idea of exactly what their finished kitchen will look like with these perspective drawings. This, this really helps everybody out and answers a lot of questions. It really does. Several people have a hard time taking a two-dimensional plan and being able to visualize the kitchen. That's where the perspectives come in and play a vital role. You can feel like you're standing at the refrigerator looking back at the microwave, standing in the family room looking back at the kitchen and really feel like you're in the space and working in it. I sure. mean, what else? The two-dimensional plan just can't do that for some right. people. I've heard a number of homeowners say the same thing, that they can really get a better perspective by having the drawings like this than a simple floor plan. Now, this is just one of the services that are provided by a certified kitchen designer. So if you have a kitchen renovation in your future, you may consider taking a little extra time and getting the involvement of a CKD. Now, tell our viewers what exactly is a CKD. 
It's a certification that's been issued by the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Take into account our structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing knowledge of a house, as well as aesthetic elements, and then the kitchen guidelines. There's 41 of them, it's a lot to cover, but it covers storage needs in a certain size kitchen, as well as your countertop space, your clearances, etc. All right, sure makes sense, and it certainly helps us from a standpoint of moving along with the project, helping the, the lighting consultant, the interior decorator, everybody. Now, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to remove all of these kitchen cabinets and start implementing this new design. Well, our kitchen renovation project is moving along nicely, and a lot has changed over the last few weeks. Now, we told you we would be opening up this kitchen, and we meant it. You almost have to look back at the before pictures to even recognize the space. Now, once the cabinets were removed, our crew began the demolition of the wall that separated the kitchen from the entry area. Then the really messy job of removing the kitchen ceiling began. The fiberglass insulation in the attic came down right alongside the drywall ceiling. We also removed the ceiling over the adjacent den since it was being changed too. Now with the walls removed, you can see the addition that we're building on the front of the house that we mentioned earlier in the show. And if it looks familiar, it's because we featured that project on a recent show. Now, if you watched that show, you probably remember our segment on our 1x6 V-Groove Pine that we installed on all of the walls as well as the ceilings, both in the great room, here in the kitchen, and in the existing den. Now, all the woodwork is complete here in the kitchen, and our cabinet shop is in the process of installing all the new custom cabinets. These homeowners chose to have a nearby cabinet shop create custom cabinets for them. That means lots of decisions and choices to make. First, the overall look of the cabinets must be decided. Will they be painted or will they be stained? If they are to be stained, what type of wood will be used? Now, this is where the cabinet maker samples are invaluable because the stain color must also be chosen. Next, the door style is decided. Now, this is an important part of the process because more than anything else, the doors define the style of the cabinets and therefore the kitchen. Formal or casual, traditional or contemporary, the doors make the difference. They also make a big difference in cost because there are so many of them in a kitchen and their construction can be very simple or complex. Of course, choices on hardware for the doors also have to be made early so that construction can begin. In this case, Laura's plans had all the dimensions and locations for the cabinets, so this information was passed along to our cabinet maker. The result, a beautiful set of cabinets made just for these homeowners. Now, whether you have custom cabinets or manufactured cabinets, there's a few things to keep in mind about cabinet installation. The wall cabinets must be level and set at the right height so that they're spaced properly above the countertops. They must also be laid out to line up accurately with the base cabinets. The base cabinets will have to be leveled both side to side and front to back. In some cases, they will need to line up with plumbing pipes or electrical outlets that will serve the appliances once they're installed. Now, when everything lines up well, the cabinets are screwed together and to the walls. Now, the wood on the walls make this a very easy job to find a place for the screws. Now, you may notice the toe kick on the base cabinets a little taller than you may be used to. The reason for this, our cabinet man made them a little taller to accommodate the field stone floor that will be installed a little bit later. Now, the field stone ranges anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half in thickness. So they'll install it on a mortar bed or grout bed, which is a mixture of cement and sand. Now, when he does that, it'll have a standard look to the toe kick at that point. Now, the homeowners did a great job in selecting the field stone with kind of a grayish brown look to it. And it's certainly going to tie together well with the selection of granite countertops that they made. It really kind of blends together all of the different surfaces of the richness of the wood, countertop, and the floor. Now, speaking of countertops, that's our next big step. And we'll look at that next. Welcome back to the show. Now, it's been about three weeks since all of the cabinetry has been installed, and since the homeowners chose granite countertops, it took a few weeks for the countertop company to make all their measurements, do all the fabrication and polishing. Now, within just a few hours, all of the countertops will be complete. Now, what they're working on now is the section of granite countertops that go around the under-counter mounted stainless steel sink. In order to mount the sinks under the countertops, the installers place several wood braces inside the cabinets for supports. 
Then the sink is placed in the cradle and the countertop dry fitted. Granite is very heavy, so carrying it into this kitchen is a fairly tough job. Now, no matter how well the tops are measured and fabricated, a little bit of cutting and notching is usually necessary to get the right fit. Now, to make these cuts, they use a diamond tip blade on a side grinder. Now, throughout the process, a lot of care is given to leveling the granite tops. Now, even though granite is very strong, it has to have a flat, level surface to rest on. Now, after all of the sections are dry fitted, it's time to apply the silicone sealer that secures the tops to the cabinets. Now, also at the same time, they mix up an epoxy seam adhesive to hold all the seams together. Now, to help pull the two heavy pieces of granite together, they use two suction cups that are connected with a large turnbuckle that makes the seams nice and tight. Now, this epoxy is very strong and sets up very quickly, so they have to work fairly fast. Now, they also use the silicone caulking to secure the under counter mounted sink. After the adhesive is dried, it's time to install the backsplashes. They glue the backsplashes to the wall as well as the tops. Now, the last step is to clean the surfaces and apply a colored caulking to all of the seams and backsplash. Now, this part of the kitchen renovation is complete. Now, it took our granite installers most of a day to complete all of their work. The next day was spent with plumbing fixtures and appliances being installed. But the granite really has pulled this kitchen together. You can see how the bar area on this side extends out, and down below we have wood supports, commonly called corbels, that'll support this long expanse of countertop. I believe the homeowner can probably put as many bar stools as they want right in that area. Now, the designer on this kitchen did a great job in keeping all of the workstations together. Here, the sink, the range top, the ovens, and the refrigerator are fairly close, but yet plenty of room to walk around in case there's a couple people in the kitchen preparing those meals. Also, one of the things that I think the homeowner did, which was great, is to choose hickory wood for all of the cabinets. You can see how nice it looks with the contrast between the pine on the walls and the hickory side by side. Really looks nice. Also, the finish on the cabinet hardware really matches well with the sink, the faucet, and all of the appliances. Really kind of ties all of that together. Also, they decided to go with the idea of raising the dishwasher up a bit, make it a little bit easier in loading and unloading all of the dishes. Now, if you're thinking maybe they don't have enough cabinets, over on this side of the kitchen makes up for any loss of cabinets with a large pantry, microwave, and plenty of storage. Now next, we'll show you the flagstone floor we've been talking about. Well, this kitchen has seen quite a transformation. If you remember what it looked like when we started this project, it was a very small, dark kitchen and very out of date. Now, with the new granite countertops, the new floors, new cabinets and appliances, and the nice wide open design, the whole family can enjoy this area of the home without getting in the way of the cook. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution. Now, homeowners really love their cordless tools, just like Joe, but you probably have a few of those tools around your shop with cords. When you have a corded tool and you're working in the shop, then it means you have to string extension cords to the tool. And the problem there is if you pull it across the floor, there's a trip hazard. Right. So one solution is to get a power strip like we have here. But if you take the power strip and permanently mount it to a workbench or to a, to a wall, it never seems to be where you're working, and then you still have to run an extension cord from the power strip. Right, because you're usually working out in the middle of the shop on a couple saw horses. Right. You still have those cords well, coming here, from the strip. Here's the solution. Take the power strip and mount it to a 1x4 board. This has keyhole slots in the back. You just put it over the screw head and slide it forward, and it locks on. Mm -hmm. Then bring it up and just screw it right to a ceiling joist like this. And then here I ran an extension cord up over the joist. Just plug, plug the power strip in, and then anytime you need to use it, swing it down, and you can plug your cord, cord from your tool right into it without using an extension at all. Yeah, I can see a problem here in that that screw, sooner or later, will get loose. That'll drop down. You won't notice it. Bam, you, in the head. That, that could happen. And one way to prevent that is just take a little block of one by two and screw it to the bottom of the joist. And then when you swing it forward, pivot it forward, 
It'll prevent that from falling down. Okay. When you need to use it, pivot it back. Just a little safety catch. That's perfect. Well, this really puts the power right where you need it. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. It just amazes me how designers can take a simple concept like a toolbox on wheels and refine it with a number of other features you can really use. Let me show you what Stanley's done here. Well, first of all, they added the wheels to the back of this and are fairly large wheels so that you can really make it around the job site very easy. Then, place for your extension cords built right into the handle and they've made the handles adjustable and removable so that you can really get it in and out of the truck very easily. Then, around back, right on top, you can see this surface. It's an aluminum surface that'll kind of serve as a small little workbench. And the groove here be perfect for laying a piece of pipe in or even a two by four to cut or drill into that. Then inside this box, it's fairly good size, has the lift out tray, padded bottom on it. Then if you decide that you only need just this toolbox on the job, you unclip it on either side, and you're ready to go. That same feature for the second level here of this toolbox. Also, it's so easy how it fits together, and you're able to clip everything just real, real nice. All right, then here you have a little rollout tray there, and you have a tray there perfect for screws, nuts, and bolts. And below that, a nice little tilt-out compartment. Kind of looks like a little clothes hamper there at home. Also, the whole thing only costs $75, and you can just imagine how versatile a toolbox like this can be. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Barbara Katz. You know, most of the pests we have to deal with in the garden really affect our plants. Now these pests do very little damage to your yard, but they can really cause you a lot of damage if they bite you. It's a fire ant, and a fire ant mound like this right. one, even though this one's very small, they can get very large. This is something to really avoid and take care of in your yard. These fire ants have been traveling now as far west as California, they've gone as far north as Delaware, and they're really spreading rapidly throughout the entire country. And the problem is, is that when the mound is alarmed, the entire ant colony will bite, and each ant will bite repeatedly. So people can have very severe allergic reactions to this pest. Now, since the fire ants are rapidly expanding across the country, there's a number of products that have been introduced to address the problem. Now, this one actually is used directly on the mound. A couple teaspoons every few weeks, the mound will die off. They'll actually take the powder back right. into the colony to take care of the queen. They don't always have complete success, though, because some of the ants can escape and set up a colony somewhere else in your yard. So we now have some new products that are coming on the market, something like this which will take about six weeks to become fully effective. But once it is, it's broadcast throughout the entire yard, and they guarantee 12 months of control. So keep your eye out for anything that looks like this in your yard and take care of the problem early. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.